There's a couple people that I want to make sure and recognize moving forward. One, I'd like to thank Tanja for her efforts uh, uh, this past six months and, and leading our track and field program and the yeoman's job she did um, this past spring was phenomenal and uh, ever indebted to gratitude for her and uh, the coaches over here and our student athletes that compete at the highest level. At the end of the day, the University of Texas is about student athletes and uh, her and our coaches did a great job and I, I just can't thank them enough. Secondly, from the process, um, this is really a process of, of two people. CP and I, you all know Chris Polanski, uh, we just, when we were looking for a head coach, we sat down together and said, let's go look at, try to find the very best coach in the country to lead our program. We firmly believe at the University of Texas, her and I firmly believe, that we should be a top 10 team in every one of our sports and competing for championships. And uh, having a, a counsel of a, of a person like CP who's been around here for a long time but knows track and field and knows what Texas is all about, CP, I can thank you for your leadership, but more importantly, your counsel through this whole process because this was a coveted job. I firmly believe, firmly believe this is the greatest job in college track and field, and there were so many people that were here. And Mr. Schimmel, your effort in council as, as, as leading this, as a search process was phenomenal, and thank you. You did a great, great job. Um, what's funny, though, is how all these things start going around. You're trying to figure out where you're going to go next. We, we needed a plane. And where's, I don't know, Gary, Gary's not here, but, but Grant is here. Grant, we got to change the tail number to your plane, my man, because uh, the media started following that, and I, they knew where I was before I knew where I was. So I can't, I can't thank you enough for letting us use your plane, but we need to switch up the names on the back of your tail number as we leave off, like just rip it off and put a new number on there, right? It's between Orlando, Eugene, uh, Sacramento, and everywhere else I was, we were at, we were chasing one guy. And uh, we were chasing one guy all over the place to see if he was interested in this job. If he was ready to take this job on. And I look at that, and the idea of trying to find a coach to lead this program, we started and ended with this individual. What he did at Stanford was second to none. Being a Southwest Conference athlete, being an Olympian. But when you took over a program at the University of Stanford and built that from a program to a national prominent program. You can say, everyone goes, oh, it's Stanford. He said the same thing, oh, it's Stanford. He takes a program that's never, ever, ever had a track history. Never had a track history. Went to the University of Kentucky. Sight unseen, by the way. Sight unseen. And said, um, I'll take that job. I'll take that challenge. And to take Kentucky track and field to a place of prominence on a national landscape can you just imagine what he could do at the University of Texas wearing that burnt orange and white? And the student athletes that we had here and listening to their voices. Um, I was intrigued, to say the least. And when you start following him on Twitter, and it's like, you know, there's only Bo knows best, it's Flo knows best, right? I couldn't figure this out. So, and I started figuring, watching him, uh, Edric Burrell is the perfect person to our lead our, lead our track program. Um, we firmly believe that we will be in short order, winning national championships again under his leadership. Mr. Farrell, come on up here, my friend. I'd like to introduce you to the new head of track and field coach, Edric Farrell. Bo knows best, Flo knows best. You are the man, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. He is the very best. The podium is yours, my man. Thank you. Oh, we got to do this. Code in front of the podium. Hey, how about this tie? He looks so sharp already. <laughs> You know? Oh, we drive the front? Yes, sir. We can hug it up. <laughs> All right. Before I hand over the mic to him, I don't know if you know this, but uh, he's so far married up. I mean, any time that you have a, a, marry a lady that wins a silver medal in the Olympics, Levon, you are so fantastic. And she knows all about track and field. We had dinner last night. I was trying to compare wits with her. I did not get anywhere. But knowing that you have two beautiful day, uh, children, EJ and Mimi, welcome to Longhorn family. I can't thank you enough for being here and allowing your husband to come join us at the University of Texas. My friend, the podium is yours. Thank you. Thank you.
Coach Florio, I'll open it up with a few comments and then we'll take your good questions. You know, you, you spend a, a lifetime perfecting a set of skills and trying to get better at something that you sort of fall into and then you fall in love with and then you try to continue to grow it. Um, you don't really don't imagine that one day is it going to come here. It's going to land in a place that's as special as this place is. Um, I have a quote from, from Forbes um, that I absolutely love. It says, 10 years of trying will make you eventually make you look like an overnight success. Um, I was at Stanford coaching some really good athletes, you, you know, but they get from decent to pretty good, but pretty good is just not good enough until you get to a point where people ask you, like Chris said, it's Stanford. Stanford is making you into what you are. So I decided um, that I want to go to a place that whatever was created, whatever was built, had to be attributed back to our, my level of, of work or, or, or desire or goal or drive, whatever you want to call it. So I went to Kentucky and, and my, my wife, who I proposed to after a week and married a couple of months later, Thought, thought it would be funny to tell me, we're going to see what you're made of, buddy. Um, and I took that as a challenge. And, and again, this is another challenge. Um, and the thing for me is, this is an opportunity. Um, people go to places who are special because they've arrived. This is an opportunity. This is a place that I can continue to build a, a legacy. This is a place that has all the required elements for success. It has nothing to do with laying on my laurels. I wake up every morning and all I want to do is get to work. I love my family, but my drive is to get better at whatever I do. And no matter what my age is to improve. And that's what my goal is for here, is just to get better. To give the student athletes an experience that they can go back years from now and say, this was the best experience of my life. And we, we owe them that because they got choices. You know, it's not like you got two choices. There's a lot of other places that they can go to. And we have to make this place the most special place where other schools will be envious. Look what they're doing at Texas. I mean, this is insane. Look how their kids are improving. Uh, I mean, I remember my, my colleague tells me, some of the athletes you coach, I've never heard about them. Who are these people winning national championship? Obviously, we, you know, we, we struck gold with Sydney, and she was developed also, and, and that's my strength. Finding the best in people and making it come to light, it, no matter how good they are. I mean, sitting there was a phenom, but she's improved for a second in all her events. That's my strength, that's what I do. That, this is what drives me, is to find that aha moment where the athlete realize that what you see in themselves is possible. And sometimes that's a battle, because the athletes don't always see that right away. And, and sometimes they're a little reluctant to see that. And, and my desire is to build this place into its rightful place. What should be. It should be at the top of all the school, N not just in performance, but people should be envying us. They should desire to use us as a model. Uh, uh, Coach Cal is a good friend of mine, and, and, and that's what he's done, and that's what I want to do. I, I want people to say, hey, we're going to do what Texas just did. Uh, we're going to build what Texas just built. We're going to uh, uh, change uh, uh, this to what Texas did, and, and we should be the benchmark for all of this stuff. And, and, and that's gonna be my job, to pick people that can work alongside me, that can uh, develop this into a national powerhouse, that, that can build it into what it should be. Uh, and, and in no disrespect to anybody who came before me, this is not about me, this is about Texas. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just a guy working with student athletes. Uh, another good friend of mine, uh, uh, Bubba Thornton used to say, it's just another day in paradise, you know? Maybe I've landed in paradise a little bit, but I'm not looking forward to, to fall asleep. I'm looking forward to build paradise into what it should be. So um, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. I'm just thankful that, that they saw me as a fit um, for such a special place, and I'm looking forward to going to work. That's, that's my strength. I just go to work. I'm, I'm not interested in anything else but working and getting better and doing the job I was hired to do. So if, Curious, what do you what do you know about the, the athletes you're going to have, and how quickly you think you can build this into what you want it to be, considering this University of Texas is hosting the outdoor Yeah, the pressure is on. I mean, we, we can't host and and and, uh, and do poorly. Um, so I got to make sure that this very first time we host that that we quickly turn it around. Um, getting to know the athletes is important. You, you don't look at their performance and say I, I know 
him or I know her. It, it's knowing their strength, their weaknesses, what they're afraid of, uh, uh, um, what their limitations are. And, and that's not something you're going to find out by looking at a number. That number doesn't mean anything. The relationship between the athletes has to be built on trust. They have to trust me when I ask them to do three events in one day. And I'm not going to get that because I'm loud, and I'm not going to get that because I got flow nose. And flow nose doesn't carry very far unless the student athlete trusts you. Yeah. I got to get involved with study hall. I got to get involved with their, their personal life. I got to get involved with their majors. I got to make sure that they understand that I care about them more than just running around the track. And that's not going to take a week. That, that's going to take months to build that trust. But I firmly expect to build that trust by the time we get to Aldo. I have to because, you know, being in the back of the pack, that's not what you guys want. That's not what you hired me for. So I'm, I'm not a fool. I'm hired to do a job and I'm for, completely conscious of what that job is. That's not an easy task. That is going to be a difficult task. But, you know, it's like, I um, forgot the name of that movie, but the, the gentleman was talking about uh, two guys in a car, and they said, a lot of people talk about the moment, but few are prepared for the moment. I, I'm prepared for this moment. I've been preparing all my life to get to this moment. I, I've coached marginal athletes to greatness. I've coached great athletes to even greater. Uh, I've been at a place that nobody thought would ever going to be any good. I, I, not afraid. That, 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 that doesn't scare me. Any, any idiot that goes to Kentucky who was dead last in the conference the year I took the job, well, you're either an idiot or, or you know something about something. Uh, and I think I know something about something. And, and I know something about hard work. Flow knows has nothing to do with what I know. It has to do with what I'm willing to go find out about. That's what flow knows is. I will find out the information required to get these people better. That's what flow knows me. Flow knows he ain't good enough. Flow knows he got to get better. Flo knows he got to improve. Flo knows about the athletes. Flo knows nothing about himself. And that's kind of what my, my mission is. So I'm going to find out what we're afraid of. I'm going to find out what we're good at. And I'm going to make it better. Did you ever take a job outside of I did not go visit. I did not go visit. I asked uh, Mitch Barnhart three questions. <laughs> I, uh, I, I was at the Olympic trials in Eugene, Oregon, and they flew to meet with me. I, I, mean, I was at Stanford and, and just had uh, the number one man and number one woman recruiting class. So I, I was not in a position where I was looking forward to, to leaving. Um, and it was a challenge. And, and I'd always hear the coaches in the SEC say, yeah, SEC is different. There's some bad dudes and bad women out here, man. You don't want to come out here. And I thought, you know what, I, I think I want to come out there and, and find out. So when Mitch talked to me, and, I, and, and it was appealing, the fact that we want to build a, a, a national powerhouse, and I thought, yeah, let's, let's go try it out. And then he told me, we'll bring you in for a couple of days, and I told him the track over. He says, yeah. It's blue, right? He says, yeah. You got grass, yeah. It's blue? He said, no, it's green grass. They call it blue grass. And I thought, I'll take the job. So I just <laughs> packed up. Because if you really think about it, the stuff is just the stuff. You can use the stuff for whatever you want to use the stuff for. So going out there and hanging out and meeting a bunch of people, to me that was less important than the fact that I believe that I was willing to do whatever it takes to be good there. So the confidence was in me to do the work required to make Kentucky successful. Sure. I refuse to let the kids see their vision for themselves. I, I was held bent on them seeing my vision for them. And I just kept pounding. I kept pounding until the point that they just gave in and said, yeah, sure, I think I can be good. Just let me say it so I can get you off my back. And then they begin to say, well, wait a minute, I, I think I can be good. So I, I think young people want direction. They want leaders who believe in them. They don't want a mushy leader. They want a guy that's going to expect them to go to class, that's going to hold them accountable. Uh, they want a guy that's going to walk the campus and see him to go to class. I think sometime, you know, like I, we lift weights at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm at weightlifting every morning. And my belief is why should I ask them to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning when I'm going to be asleep? So whatever the student athletes do, uh, I do. If they got to get up in the morning, I'm up in the morning. If uh, the first event, like, until the last kid compete, I'm there. It could be pouring rain. I don't care because I can't ask them to perform for the university, uh, for their team, for, the, for their community. I'm sitting in a hotel, cozied up, watching TV. So uh, you have to sort of invest yourself to the point where they believe that this is not about me. This is us. This guy's always there. This guy's the first one to give me a high five. This guy is in a weight room. This guy comes out to hang out with a cross country team and watch him practice. All this stuff is invest, investment in them. And when you do that, they reciprocate. They reciprocate big time. We talk about the millennials and all this stuff. I, 
it's just getting involved. I, I, I think they're a little bit different, but I'm going to make myself into a millennial so I can go hang out with them. And that's what I do. I, I tweet, and I do it, and some of the stuff they do is a little cuckoo. Um, but I do cuckoo. I don't mind doing cuckoo. If that's what it takes for us to be successful, I'll make myself into a cuckoo, and I'll find, find a way to kind of reach them at their own spot. Because you know, I got two over here that, that they're, they're a little different. You know, I, I remember my son texting me from the basement asking me what's for dinner. Uh, you got 12 stairs, man. You can, and I thought, why well, fight it? That uh, chicken. And he's like, <laughs> like uh, what kind of chicken? You know, so you're sitting there thinking, I'm texting a guy that's in the basement about a meal that he's going to eat anyway. You know, but it's just, hey, you know, great, no problem. I just make myself available and I just join them. I just, you know, try to reach my, my beautiful 20 year old daughter. It, it's, it's challenging. But I got to get to her world and make myself the dad that she envisioned. And whatever that is, I'll morph myself into that. And but I just don't fight many battles. I just don't believe in fighting battles because the ultimate battle is to get the kids to graduate and get them to perform and get them to enjoy the experience. Do you visit Texas I know. I already know what I need to know. And the most important thing about this job is this man. Uh, um, man, I, I'm, I wasn't sold at first. I'm like, I don't know if I like this guy. But after hearing his vision, after hearing his passion, that he really wants this place to be successful, I, I, I was sold. I, I wanted this thing to get over with ASAP because I thought, man, we're wasting weeks. I could be out there recruiting, that I could be out there getting the staff together. We should, we should have done that weeks ago. I could have gotten a whole lot of stuff done by now, and I'm thinking, speed it up, brother, let's go. But, but I'm, I'm pretty clear on, on kind of what he wants. And, and when an athletic director tells you, oh, we want to be pretty good, you, what is pretty good? It's, you know, it's like ambiguous. It, we want to be no worse than top 10 one in the national championship. It's old. I, I'm clear. And, and I think we need to have clear goals, and, and people need to be clear with each other. I, I don't want to get better. But, I want to be told we got to get to this spot by this spot. Okay, great. Then I can kind of put a roadmap together. But I'm not interested in the, the fluffy stuff. That's right. No worries. Can you help them? Just your background, uh, Marshall and all that. Sure. You know what your school is about. You know what this program is. Sure. Something like you're supposed to do. Sure. Uh, does that help kind of carry the day to kind of what, what you think this place is about? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think some places, uh, they're like a, a tree hard to get your hands around them. And the challenge in life is just try to get your hands around them. I, I don't want to get a small tree trunk and, oh, success, I've got my hands around it. I think this is a cool place because no matter how big you get, you can never get your hand around it. You just got to keep working at it. And that's, that's what I like. I like the fact that, that you can't outgrow the place. And, and, and um, I got to a spot where I felt that my next vision with where I was was maybe a little bit limited, and I, and I want to get to a place where I can dream big, I can come up with stuff that, that somebody's not going to tell me, oh, we don't do that here. And, and, and this is the, the place that, that you can dream big, and, and you can tell the student athlete stuff, and they're like, ooh, and then the stuff materializes itself, and I think that's important. So, so vision, belief, and commitment is important, and, and, and letting the kids dream big and, and kind of run with it, that, that's important also, as opposed to limiting them, and that's what I'm into, and I think this is almost a limitless place, I and mean, you can build whatever you envision, and once you've done that, you can reinvent it again, which is really cool. Just continues to keep reinventing yourself. I was actually talking to a friend of mine, and in and, and, and recruiting, there's a few things that I told myself, I'm not doing that. And um, I lost some recruits because I'm not doing that. Well, guess what? I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to change my recruiting strategy. I'm going to get out there and then talk to these guys. I'm going to send birthday cards, birthday wishes fluffy emails, I'm going to send tweets, man, I'm going to do it, all of it. Because if you don't do that, that's your refusal to adapt. And you can't complain if you didn't get to recruit because you're too hard-headed to adapt. So at 51 years old, I'm going to reinvent myself again. And I'm going to do it again and again and again and again and again. Because our limits is kind of what we decide. I'm not going to do that. And the thing is, I'm never going to say I'm not going to do that again. My only commitment is to do it uh, uh, ethically and by the rules. Beyond that, I'm going to do whatever it requires for us to be successful, whatever the student athletes feel that is important to them. Uh, if they're into the fluff, we're going to fluff them. If they're into uh, making this uh, a Taj Mahal, well, let's make it the Taj Mahal. But we got to perform, and we got to perform at the highest level. It can't be a give it has to be a give and take. If we're going to do all this stuff, 
there got to be some stuff coming back because I think the community and, and the rec department expect and demand that stuff. Do you have any ideas what their staff is going to be like? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the hunt. Um, I, I'll say that. You know, obviously you don't want to spook people, but I, I'm on the hunt. Uh, um, and obviously we want the very best people uh, um, who can actually share the vision. Um, I, I don't want people to come here because they've arrived. I want people to come here to say, you know, I, I got a bigger cannon. Uh, uh, you know, all of a sudden I got uh, 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 more things to sell. I have more appeal. I, this is this is sec this place is sexy. You know, let, let's be let's not fool ourselves. This is a sexy place. I mean, it's it's man that I remember. Uh, I knew things were going to go down the hill fast when when I went to look at the fight song and start memorizing the eyes of text. I thought, what am I doing? I, I'm, it's not even my job yet. Um, you know, but but. It's, it's cool, the song is cool, that, that, hook him, that's all cool, that's all real sexy. That, and that's what's important, it, it, this, these days it, it sells and it makes kids excited to be part of something that, that they can be proud of. Is there any idea of cross-country Yeah, that, that will be handled very, very quick because I, I think it's important that a student athlete get the adjustment to the program. Uh, obviously, I don't want them to come back and, and, and be behind. So. That's the first thing that's going to be handled. Get somebody of highest quality, and and um, to be frank, not every distance coach can coach here because we're warm. Uh, somebody I can coach at 60 degree weather, right? That's ideal. We, we're not going to get that here. So uh, picking a person that can coach in a warm climate is important. So just paying attention to what really matters, because uh, you can take a guy that's really successful and, and he can struggle here because a little warmer than it is in, in, in some of the, the cooler places. So all that stuff has to be tended to. Yeah, well, I mean, they, I guess they're tweeting about it. I, I guess we have to make room for them. Um, and, you know, on the post-collision side, I, I think when kids come here and they aspire to one day be a professional, having a stage well, that's already set, it makes it easier for them to transition. Um, you, you know, you get football players that come, they want to go in the NFL. Uh, why not the same thing here? Why not have track athletes come, and, and, and I'm sure you guys know some of the names of the people that, that I coach, and they're, they're excited, they're probably, I don't know if they're more excited than I am, but they're, they're certainly fired up um, you know, to, to be here. Because um, the place is special, yeah, so that they'll be, They'll be coming. The, the people who are fit will be coming. Uh, and what they offer is a huge amount of knowledge and experience to our student athlete. Uh, I mean, these people have won Olympic medals and world records. Just imagine if you're scared before the NCAA championship and you sit next to a person that's like, oh, God, I went to the Olympic trials and I choked. I didn't even make the final. So big deal. Let's deal with this. And, and I think it makes it easier for the kids to feel like it's going to be all right. So uh, they play a huge part on, on on not my success because the development is I had to develop them but on the success of our student athlete and they're involved and they're not just training that they're, they're coaches they're they're setting up hurdles and, and setting up blocks and then talking to the kids about you know nerves and, and things like that so um, the, the professional group is not just professional group they're, they're volunteer coaches that there are people that 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 work with our student athlete and talk about technical aspects and their adjustments so uh, they're fully integrated in the staff and that's what's cool about it is that it, it becomes when you, know, you have a world record holder setting up your hurdles for warm-up I think it's kind of intimidating to the competitors and kind of cool is that oh yeah my hurdle goes right here please and, and, and they don't mind doing it Pardon me? Yeah. yeah. What about the Kentucky athletes? Are you thinking about Um, I, I mean, right now, I'm not interested in Ramsack in, in, in any place. I, I'm, my goal is right here. I, I want to focus on, on the kids who are on this team and who are part of this team. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not encouraging any of that. that that's not. That's not the, the quality that I think Chris expects from me. I, I'm not doing that. I'm not inviting anybody to do anything. I just need to deal with what we have here. We got, I got plenty of issues here to deal with, so the last thing I need to do is add more headaches for us. So I'm not encouraging anything. They, they, they make their own decision, but my, my concern is student athletes on this campus. Is Marginal athletes to get, to get 
technique. I mean, if you're slower, you're going to be slow. But great technique improves speed tremendously. I'm, I'm, I don't know, maybe a nerd, whatever you want to call it. Um, I believe in technique. I believe in perfection. I believe in adjustment, the foot strike, uh, uh, how much uh, force you generate off the ground. Um, you know, what's the lead leg angle? What's the trail leg angle? Uh, uh, how high can your knee be? Uh, strength levels, clean, squat, all that stuff is important. So to me, it's like there's, you can always get better technically. Um, if you try to get an athlete to run fast, a like, coach, this is all I got. But if I improve your technique, you're more, more, more efficiently. And, and you might not have the same raw speed in somebody else, but if you're more efficient, in the end, that person's going to get fatigued. And when they get fatigued, your better technique will take care of business. So, Isaiah, one of the scholarships, uh, when you establish some sort of a relationship with Coach Sure. I'm, I'm open to anything. It's really cool because I get to use his money. It doesn't count against me. So <laughs> uh, I'm definitely down with that. And so I'll, I'll definitely uh, I'll be glad to talk to him about that. Um, because if you think about it, we got limits in scholarship. But if I can use some of his to make us better, I, I'd be an idiot not to do that. So I absolutely, if I got a bag, uh, begging, whatever I'd have to do to to build a relationship and try to get this thing going. And I also think I got to be fair to, you know, I don't want to uh, use his athletes and kind of damage them. So I got to make sure that I can contribute something back. So what, whatever and however I can work within his system to help him be more successful, uh, I'm done with it. If I, if I got to help recruit, hey, man, let's do it. Cool. You want to go to a place where you can bring big when they're not going to just let me know. Sure. Just can't do stuff. I'm curious if you, coming in, if you have a checklist of things that you, that Gulf Texas you want and mm -hmm. need, in order to get you here, and what was the response? It wasn't no. <laughs> if it, was, it, it was the answer that got me here. Uh, yeah, we could do that. And, and, and I think the cool thing about Chris is you're going to get no, and sometimes it's not no, as but we could do this instead. A good substitute. And I think that's the cool thing is that he, he, sees, he sees it the right way. It's like, I can't do that. But I can do that to substitute for it. Fine by me. As long as my boss wants to explore other avenues, I'm down with it. I know that some of the stuff I have in my mind is not going to happen, but if he has a good substitute for it, uh, that's good too. The NCAA announced new permission to contact transfer rules a couple days ago. How are you aware of that? And if so, how do you think it will impact um, your job? Yeah, I, mean, I haven't seen all the stuff yet, so I'm, I'm going to not comment on something I'm not completely aware of. I, I've read the proposals, but that's really all I've read, so I'm, I'm not going to comment on, on what's the official new rule on, until I can see it. Um, yeah, so I, I'm just not sure what was decided. I know of the, some of the proposals, so I'm just not going to comment until I know for sure what I'm talking about. Yeah.